I personally like all the winter shots usually. Yeah, it's so much character and it looks really artsy in my opinion anyways. What did I read today? I thought this was kind of interesting just in terms of drones and how they would fly. Like in terms of things like drone shape is actually not new in terms of one looking like a bird in an airport in an effort to scare other birds from aircraft. This one here says soft bio hybrid morphing wings with feathers under actuated by wrist and finger motion. Since the Wright Flyer, engineers have strived to develop flying machines with morphing wings that can control flight as deftly as birds. Birds morph their wing platform parameters simultaneously including sweep, span, and area in a way that has proven to be particularly challenging to embody robotically. So ultimately with all their work and research and all that, it says the outcome, the pigeon bot embodies 40 degrees of freedom that controls the position of 40 elastically connected feathers through four servo actuated wrists and finger joints. Our flight tests demonstrate that the soft feathered wings morph rapidly and robustly under aerodynamic loading. And it says they not only enable wing morphing, but also make robot interactions safer. The wing more robust to crashing and the wing repairable through preening. In flight tests, we found that both asymmetric wrists and finger motion can initiate turn maneuvers. Evidence that birds may use their fingers to steer in flight. And with all the videos, you can basically see, I guess, the wing morphing, flapping and all that. At the same time, it actually taking off, making flight. I'm just thinking, imagine having something, let's just say, you went shopping or something like that and you don't want to carry this thing, you want it to follow you. Attach these wings to it and it'll follow you back. Like, to me that would be kind of cool. And for stories in general about that FAA remote ID stuff, I'm still keeping track of it. Because as you guys know, if that actually goes through in the US, that could potentially mean every single drone needs to be tracked. You need internet access. And while I'm not in the US, ultimately things that happen elsewhere in the world will happen to you as well, most likely. So it's kind of interesting reading this official response with a company like DJI because as you guys know, they kind of advocate the fact that they want some kind of, I guess, remote ID system. But this one here says, we strongly support drone remote ID, but not like this. DJI wants governments to require remote ID for drones, but the FAA has proposed a complex, expensive, and intrusive system that would make it harder to use drones in America and that jeopardizes the success of the remote ID initiative. Instead, we support a simpler, easier, and free version of remote ID that doesn't need a cellular connection or a service subscription. Read on and discover why the future of drone innovation in America is at risk and how you can make your voice heard between now and the FAA's March 2nd deadline of submitting comments on the official government website. I think it was kind of interesting how they also use cars as the analogy so the regular person can understand. It says, everyone understands why cars need license plates. Drivers have to be accountable. But what if instead of just a license plate, your car was also legally required to be connected through the internet to a privately run car tracking service that charged you an annual fee of about 20% of your car's value and stored six months of your driving data for government scrutiny? Would you think the government had gone too far? And of course they talk about how they think their solutions are a lot better, like in general. But it says here, the FAA's proposed rule is the most momentous step in American drone policy in years. Thousands of people are expected to file comments on the proposal by March 2 deadline because they know how much is at stake. The FAA's proposal requires virtually all drones to be networked to a remote ID service managed by private supplier companies anticipated to charge mandatory subscription fees. These companies would store the drone's flight records for at least six months. The proposed requirement creates undue financial and compliance burdens and would impede America's existing drone industry. And then there's, I guess, selective parts where they really wanted to highlight, like in bold. Like this one says, this stark reliance on unproven systems could shut down expensive Hollywood productions, complex industrial operations, and even life-saving rescue missions. That is true. I believe actually one of you guys mentioned that too. Like what if you wanted to use this drone to save someone's life and there's no internet connection, for example, in the area? Oh, I can't use this drone anymore, so that's it. Why would you want to do that? Although funny enough, I made that point about like things like the geofence as well, which they use. Where if you're a responsible flyer or something like that, in my opinion, you should be able to use it in that way. Especially if a country has like a licensing system and all that, where you have to pass. Makes me wonder too, in the US, has anyone actually ever seen anyone who said they're fully in support? of this type of system. It's going to be interesting to hear the perspective anyways. Just like here like in Canada, some people are like, oh yeah, it makes perfect sense in every way. You ask them why in most cases. It just sounds like it comes down to money, honestly. Like at least here for a lot of the situations.
makes me wonder if most of the squirrels just hide inside like the tree during this time. Is this where they eat all their stashed away food and all that? Alright, see you guys later.